love, unity. Banco Yiriwandi, Gambia, Banco Yiriwandi. Services currently in the Gambia. Well, studios Lee's West Yorkshire Tensile Mount. My name is Mustafa Jame here at the seat. 
Uh, with me today, we got uh, Mr. Momodu Sabali. Well, he will introduce himself to us and tell us who is Momodu Sabali right here in the arts of Banjul de Gambia. Uh, first of all, we would say a uh, warm welcome to you, Mr. Sabali. Thank you for the time, effort, and energy uh, for coming on here uh, to have a little chat with us. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sabali. Can you, first of all, introduce yourself? Who is Mr. Momodu Sabali? Well, thank you and thanks for having me and greetings to all your listeners and viewers. Mm -hmm. I'm Omudu Sarveli, a born in Banjo, raised in Lamin, uh, an economist by training, former central banker, from uh, national budget director. We later became Secretary General Minister of Presidential Affairs. I'm an author at heart, a youth empowerment uh, enthusiast and international speaker. Mm -hmm. Right, in that in some that's that was, that, that's a good summary of uh, Momodu Savali. But an economist seen yourself in politics. Why politics? Well, um, I'm, I'm sure you 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 would know that the original name of our field economics was a political economy. So economics and politics are inseparable. And being a politician does not necessarily uh, preclude me from being being an economist. So for me, it's, it's just normal that an economist is also a politician. Yeah. Right. Uh, coming to the call, um, you did mention you've been a presidential advisor for the former government. Presidential which, Affairs Minister. Oh, Presidential Affairs Minister. Yeah. Which you, uh, was the former government uh, president of Yaya Jamez government, innit? So that being the case, um, you serve under him. Would you say you see yourself as a success in that particular government, your role there? Would you say that you are a success in that government? Well, I, 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 I would not be the one to judge myself. It's out there for the public to judge uh, what has, whether I was a success or not. What I know for sure is I had an opportunity to serve my country and I did it to the best of my ability. I'm very proud of that record. Yeah, but there, there are some, you know, in every activity you do, you must have some hitches down the line. Would you say you have some hitches? Why? Absolutely, you know? without a doubt. The very, fact that you, uh, the very fact that you are uh, presidential affairs minister for uh, Germany is a hitch in itself because it's a very difficult guy to work with. What and, makes it uh, difficult then? Well, I mean, I think it's partly personality, partly uh, his experience uh, as a leader. Would he say he's got no good personality or is no, he? I, ne I never experience? said that and I will never ever say that. Our that experience I never totally condemn the alien and I will never ever do that. He has his good side, his bad side. What I was trying to drive to is, right. I said, it's difficult to work with Jan. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to understand why. And I'm telling this part of his personality. He's a, he's a very complex guy. And uh, the second one is, as a leader, you led a country. By the time I joined Jan's government, he had uh, led for 20 years or 19 years. Yeah. You get all sorts of betrayals and uh, backstabbing and uh, tough experiences. That will toughen you naturally. Yeah. But also running a country like Gambia is more difficult than running than in America because of the uh, attitude of uh, most of the people in this country. So so all of that, and, and Jame is just a weird guy at some level, so it's not, it's not easy working with him. Well, simplify that for us, if you said weird. Well, I mean, uh, he, 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 he does act in ways and say things that the normal human being would not. So that's why I'm saying... Uh, Do you say well, he's an abnormal human Well, I would not say he's abnormal. He's just complex and difficult to work with. Uh, I know Jame is a patriot. I always say that there's no Gambia more patriotic than uh, Jame. And uh, I think he, he's a serious guy, you know, uh, he's ambitious and he wanted the best for the country. Did he give the best for the country? No. Why he fell short of it? My, for me, it's a natural, uh, natural uh, uh, process of things. We, we, even in our personal lives, we don't always hit our target. We, we do fall short. Yeah. But uh, Jame had uh, attitudes that also hampered that, for instance, his... Uh, unnecessary harshness and hardness and cruelty towards those he saw as his opponents. I think that really limited him. And also, that also uh, limited the resources, especially human resources he needed to work with. Just like, for instance, anybody who had a friend who was a position then is deemed to be an enemy of the government. And, and I know we are thousands of highly qualified Gambians that personally I wanted in the system to come and work. When I was head of the civil service, but I know I dared not give some of them. Why? Some of them I dared not even mention their Why? Name. No, because Gamma saw some of these people as enemies, which may not necessarily 
have been the case. Would you say he was operating as a dictator? Well, there's no doubt about that. Javed himself said it, so he, he said he's a dictator. He said anything, but I think he qualified it. Yeah, but how he do you see yourself dictator. working on yeah. a dictator? Are you a dictator as well? I'm, I'm, you can work I, with a dictator. I, 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 I'm not, you must get some similarities. I'm, I'm, I'm not a dictator, you know. So if you say that I have similarities with him, that means Fatma Ratambayan has similarities with him, okay. Dr. Sidat Gob has similarities with him, Amadou Skashadjani has similarities with him, and the entire civil service. So that's their wrong premise. Right. Yeah. Um, but if I may put it this way, uh, you've worked under him. Yes. And then would you say you've achieved most that your targets are, would you? Well, I would say that I, I'm, I'm uh, generally highly satisfied with what I was able to do under him. Uh, I would not give myself an A plus, not even too ambitious, maybe not even an A, but perhaps a B plus or something, <laughs> given the circumstances. Yeah. yeah. Right. Gamme as a nation under Gamme, was it? Uh, a success. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly it was not a failure. That much I can say and that's one of the things I told this borough administration at the very early stages when they started complaining about everything. There is no money, there is no desire. I said, hey, hello, you did not inherit a failed state in this country. Jamia left the nation intact despite all the shortcomings. So Jamia was not a failure. He gave us our first university that I attended and thousands of young people who now work in this country and outside this country, some of them are professors. He gave us our first TV for God's sake. It used to take a whole day to get to Bungu, and now you can shut it in half an hour. And give yeah. you guys some credit, man. <laughs> right, so, um, but, you know, some of these critics, I, yes. don't, I do not buy sometimes, yes. because... You cannot not you buy it. You do have a road to Bungu, you, you have a road. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, yes. I understand. That's yeah, that's, I mean, just accept that's right. some of those but, things. You, know, you can uh, take a whole day to talk about these negatives, but the guy left some tangible developments that nobody can ever obliterate for the, for the rest of time. Without doubt. Well, what I'm saying here is, like, uh, if you... It's like you're giving some good. Yes. You're giving with the right hand, taking with the left hand. The good he did. Yeah. How about the killings and all that? I'm not denying that. <laughs> if you want me to talk about it, we sort of done kill people, he locked up people. I mean, he, he, he brutalized people. That's all part of the yeah, Somebody who did that, yeah. you say he brought good for the people. I'm telling you the good he brought alongside the bad he has. You cannot just separate the two. You have to take Jamie as a whole. That's unfair to him and even unfair to, to the young people of this country and these some of the problems we have in this transition and that's why the reconciliation pro process is, is in complete tatters. Because if you want to talk about the bad things the guy does, go ahead, I don't have a problem. I'm a victim of your idea, man. And Grammy knows that. But you cannot keep a blind eye to all the good things that this guy did. For instance, you go to a university convocation, a university that your idea beat. You give Jawara an honorary doctorate. Satan Jawa, who was a minister under Grammy. You give her an order, you will not even acknowledge the agenda's name. That's the travesty of justice at the highest level. Travesty of justice at the highest level, like you put it there, uh, Mr. Savali. Well, um, if I could remember, there was this um, video message that went round. It went a bit viral, if I could say, uh, about you reading a statement against the Mandinkas. I never, I, read, I never read any statement against Mandinkas in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, correct me. I, I that was not a statement by the human being. What was that? Yaya Jame, mm -hmm. in his own hand, wrote a message addressing critical issues that were happening at the time. Within that message, he, he himself, with his own handwriting, mm -hmm. and I have living witnesses to that, put in some messages that were very critical of the Mandinkas, totally unwarranted, totally unjustifiable, actually shameful for him to write that kind of message, it fell on my table as Secretary General. I am on the record together with Nana Gray Johnson, then Information Minister and Nuhati Ray, then my Deputy Secretary of the Cabinet, and we, we actually advised him for a minute that this statement ought not to be read. But Jai being the person who he is, the response he gave, I will not even get into details. We had to go, I, I was actually at the uh, TV headquarters with Nana Gray Johnson and my Deputy at the time, and I read the statement as an official statement of the Gambia government. Okay, some people uh, push this message as uh, Mohdu Sabali attacking Mandinkas. And I am like, I have apologized for this, mm -hmm. even though I was coerced, these circumstances were really uh, terrible at the time. I have apologized for this, I stand on that apology, and I'm not apologizing only to Mandinkas, but even to the non-Mandinkas, because there are people who were not Mandinkas who took offense as well. It's a statement that ought not to have been written, ought not to have not been read, it's completely offensive. But some people uh, took that as a weapon to try to blight 
my future in this country. So yeah, they, they did it, and, and it's, it's very shameful. And I know there are people who still apologize to me for that, because finally they know it was not my message. And as uh, a very good friend and intellectual pal of mine told me, and that gives me great solace, is that suddenly anybody who knows you knows that you will not even attack another tribe, topless of your own tribe, because you are a cultured person, and that's the truth. Yeah, but saying that, Mr. Samali, yeah. um, you know the statement is not right. Yes. Um, and it's against, you know, quite a few tribes in the Gambia. Yes. But you still went ahead. Yes, against went everybody, ahead. not even a few tribes. Yeah. You still went statement. ahead to read it. Obnoxious, yes. Why did you went ahead and read it? Because if you know that this is not with your, does uh, not match up with your, your, your beliefs or so, why would you read it? Well, um, maybe you were not listening to my answer, I've listened to or, or maybe you don't know your idea, or you decide to selectively remember what you want to remember and forget what you want to forget about what happened here in 22 years. He is a president who unilaterally declared our country an Islamic Republic and everybody fell in line, including our judges, the Bar Association, the National Assembly, even the diplomatic missions called us Islamic Republic of Uganda. Yeah, well, if you don't that mind. was yeah, 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 so we cannot sit down and uh, pretend yeah, it, as if that, it was a normal situation. Yeah. It was not. Yeah. And you know it's not. Yeah. I'm sure you were not coming to the Gambia very often during those days. Well, Absolutely, without a doubt. I have been coming to the Gambia. <laughs> well, maybe you used to come to Senegal. We've seen well, this instance in Senegal. We've seen this yeah. instance of people who are criticizing Gambia. When they want to come, they come in Senegal because they don't even want their record to be in the, in the, in the immigration record yeah. that they came into this country. Well, what because the terrible try. situation that uh, some of us were unfortunate to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And we well, didn't apologize, we stand on that apology. At wrong time. Absolutely. Uh, but what I'm trying to drive at is, yeah. he could have resigned. I'm saying, listen, this is... Well, it's we easy to say here sitting at the village and Jama is out of here, there's no NIA, there are no junglers. It's easy to say here. The reality was different and those people who are honest and sincere enough know that the realities pre uh, obviated that kind of situation, especially given my position at the time as Secretary General Minister of Presidential Affairs, Head of the Civil Service and uh, Secretary General of the Civil Party. It's not an easy situation to, to resign. Absolutely. Well, um, you had a very big position in the yes. Army Parade. Huge. And then, did you ever advise the president to say or do something that he, was, that he listened to? Yeah, yeah, on occasion. That, that has happened. To, to, his credit, to be honest, I mean, uh, for instance, I remember particularly when the people spent the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Haruna Drame, head of paradise, came yeah. to see me. He's my friend. He discussed some of these issues, and uh, with the help of uh, then director general of national TV, Lamin Manga. Oh, well, Lamin, yes. I, I approached Jami. I think it was on the eve of New Year or Christmas, you know, and for some reason, because I had been planning to do this a long time, but it's difficult. My brother, Biras Biras Ado Biata. I At the time, I had to take my time and strategize a thousand and one ways. Well, uh, well uh, yes, uh, if you would agree that the entire country, apart from Lawyer Dabo and his crew, <laughs> if you would agree that all the UJOs were the country, yeah, yeah, we want to join it, and all the UDP military were the country. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I mean, you, where were you? I should <laughs> answer the borrow question. You <laughs> <laughs> don't answer that. I can't answer that. Uh, I was in jail for six months, man. Yeah. Was that it? Absolutely. Was that it? it? Absolutely. Was that it? What do you mean? Well, I said, was that it? What do you mean? Six months. Yeah. Was that it? What do you mean? Well, how about the people who've been there? Why didn't you try one day? <laughs> <laughs> you could have come here and held a, um, a demonstration. You would not. Right, uh, <laughs> in bit, you know, yeah, so I was talking about instances where yeah. I went to Abia, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to just giving you the, not a credit to me, it's right. just something that happened, I'm not bothered about credit, yeah, okay. I am Mungu Rizavali and those people who know me, know me, they don't need any credit, okay. those who love me, they love and trust me, those who don't, I mean, London King environment for them, see, for the government of USA, okay. like, haters will always be haters, and I'm not bothered about public we will come but what happened that. was, there was a moment mm -hmm. that I had an opportunity to do meetings, and by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I moved. Luckily, Jamie was in the right mood, and he agreed to open both standard newspaper and Teranga FM in one night with a simple press release. Other instances, uh, I mean, I, I remember journalist Sana Kamara was now working with Barrow. I traveled to Russia, came back. He had a problem with the police, and they detained him immediately. And the, the instruction was he was not supposed to be granted bail. I arrived, Sheriff Bodham called me, I called IGP, and that's why I still respect that. I said, release the guy, and he released it, and that's a great risk. 
that he took. You know, other instances, people detained in mile two without any court order or anything. I, I collaborated with the IEP and, you know, he does these things. People being fired from jobs like current Defense Minister Omar Fai when he was fired from Mauritania uh, to appeal to Germany to reinstate him and even promote him to become ambassador in Washington, D.C. And Cyber Gallo, Dito, and many others. You know, so I'm not here to blow my own trumpet. Right. Uh, since you asked the question, yeah, I, no, 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 no. That is brilliant. It's brilliant. Like you know, uh, which uh, and know, it was, it was not easy. I, yeah, I, I, I admit, know. we were, we were afraid of damage too. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> coming to the, because um, if I could remember, you were, you work with the Aya Jame. Yes. And then uh, from Jame, you. Did you ever work with Adam Obrano? Never. Never. But did you try to work with him? Never. Did you, uh, how about the Barrow Youth Movement? Were you part of this in ne any? Never. Did for for try clarity's to... sake, mm -hmm. the, the founders, that includes Ansu Singhate, mm -hmm. the current president. Yeah. Well, I don't know the initial. But anyway, Ansu was my friend. Okay. You know, I, I, I mingle out with a lot of these young people. And uh, okay. I remember I attended, uh, when Barrow was launching the Rose and Pages project in yeah. Basse, I attended that. Yeah. I was in the same car with these guys. I took a selfie. You know, I can be provocative sometimes. Okay. I took a selfie and put it on social media and the social media went like uh, into a storm, like somebody's EYM. And these young people were worried and they came by my cave boy. I have to go I'm afraid I'm not going to go to the I'm part of EYM. I didn't know what How about DMC? You know any DMC? DMC, no, ever. Ever. Why? I was just wondering because you ever attend their meeting or rally somewhere. No, you, no. you know what I was doing at the time. Yeah, that means that much <laughs> surrounding your name, you know. Yeah, no, I, I'll break it down for you, please. Because uh, uh, you were calling, and then a friend of mine even said, "Oh, Sabali, that flip flop, you know." And then speculation that much surrounding your name. So, you know, please clarify. It. Yeah, that, what happened was, um, if you know me as a chosen, I'm a very open, tolerant, and inclusive, inclusive person. And normally, I don't allow politics to be a wedge between me and people. So, um, I'm a mentor to tens of thousands of young people. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? so, and uh, you can ask him. I've never discussed politics with him. I don't care which political party you belong to. If you're a young person, you have ambition, you think I could be of help you, you call me anywhere I would go. So, the way this whole thing started was MC Cham, yeah. who was the youth leader for G GDC. So it's GDC, not DMC. Yeah, oh, okay, GDC, yeah. During those hot days of the uh, immediate transition, he had a meeting with the youth leadership of GDC. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to invite me to come and uh, coach them and give them leadership tips. Yeah, yeah. I went, I remember when I was growing, the other young people I was working with who are non-partisan, they yeah. told me, okay, well, but he, he was something else. And I said, aha, he said this. Yes. I went there, did our meeting. I took pictures, I told them, put it on social media. Who owns me? I'm a free born Gambian, I'm gonna fight him. Mama will have a world day with Mutter Jambe, so I'm not in the So that's what happened. I know Ibrahim Asila, then Director General of DRTS, oh, so, yeah. who is my brother and friend, and mm -hmm. I was supporting in some way. Mm -hmm. Uh, in his leadership role at the uh, TV. He called me, he said, you know, I have a lot of money, 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 I have a lot So some people were really angry because they expected me to support the status quo. So people took that, that I am GDC. What later happened was, uh, okay, the, the, the meeting in Basel which I attended, and I told the BRM boys, up to today, they are my close friends and mentees. What are you? Yes. We work at Keta, and so Singate, Keba, Lang, they are like brothers to me. Up to today, when I have my beach hangouts with these young people, they all come. Politics will not, never ever drive away between me and people. So the other one was uh, APRC had a youth rally, yeah. and they invited me. I think that was even more explosive. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to attend the rally. Yeah. And again, for me, it's youth work, because I still remember that they, your youth at Gwinyu, yes. Gwinyu Youth, they had a tree planting exercise, oh, yeah, I was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Sarahuli lady, Aisha Jawara, had a book launch. I was there to launch her book. I Africa TV had an event at uh, the Monument on Wrestling I attended. And I told my friend, I was going, I said, you know, then them sing APRC, and he was a boy, why you go, why you go, why you I said, no. One young person, APRC, the leadership, never ever attended, invite him to any single event for the past three years. For what reason, I don't know. Because I'm not their enemy, and they know I still love and respect them. But I was a young, lone APRC youth who sent me a message on social media, just like, yeah, send me a message for this interview. Yeah. He said, Mr. Sabari, we have this youth, and we want you there. Please come. So I said, if Mwadu Sabari, 
former Secretary General of the JNA, former Secretary General of APRC, former Minister of President of Affairs, can go to three youth events. And the APRC has a youth event, and I didn't go to the market for it. That's why I went and I addressed him at the fanfare. So the, that also went viral. So because of these things, and I know PDIS did attend that, uh, organized an event, later I attended that also. Mm -hmm. So people start saying, oh, somebody is flip-flopping, yeah, 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 yeah. it's not true. So when it comes you know, to youth matters, no boundaries. I have no, but up to today, what will be BB? GDC youth, so near even so a young commandy. But not a year, I will go and do it. No, one time I said, Kendall, let's, yeah. you know, me along. Uh, uh, Mr. Sabali is a youth activist as well. He supports youth in the Gambia and then in the diaspora as well. Uh, that is great uh, of him. And then we do applaud him for that as well. On that note, Mr. Sabali, uh, when we come to the current government, what's your take on the current government with President Barrow in charge? <laughs> your take? Really, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to talk because um, I don't have anything good to say about this government right now. And uh, I really try to be fair in my criticism. Mm -hmm. I am EDP and we are the government in waiting. Adam Barrow happens to be our president by accident and we have to accept that, you know. Allah establishes whom he feels in the position of power and the So we accept Allah and you can be. Adam Barrow and Mansati and Narad Munyana or Horomo Diala. But I'm not you know, this, this government is a total disaster, if you ask me. Yeah, because I mean, uh, this is what we're driving here. Yeah. So, because if you say it's a disaster, yes. help us out. Yeah, uh, 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 for instance, Barrow coming into this government with the cardinal principle being to serve for three years, and he reneged on that and insisted of completing five years. That's bad enough. As if that's not enough, he's saying he's going to establish his own political party and run again. Fine, I was in government. And that's why I say I try not to be too harsh because I've been there and it's not easy. I know it's, it's, it's not easy to fulfill promises on a political platform. But if you go to a point where you see that you can't fulfill your promises, for God's sake, at the very least, come back to the people and talk to them with maximum respect and humility and ask for an extension of your mandate. We know that the Constitution has given Barrow the power to stay for five days. Mm -hmm. Nobody is disputing that. But if you want to do that, go and talk to the people whom you promised on all your political platforms, including your manifesto that you're going to serve for three years. Go and talk to them with respect. Wallahi, I know Gambian people. If Barrow took the right channels, the right decorum, Gambians would hand him this, uh, uh, how did the former vice president call it? Uh, this social legitimacy, mm -hmm. but without getting it without tear gas, without blood, because he spilled blood in this country. You know, so, 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 so for me, that's the first biggest disappointment that Barrow did. I, I'm, I'm doing a series of opening letters, letters to him. The third one I'm going to publish today. And I'm talking about this coronavirus. When it started, Barrow was up country touring. He was pulling light crops. You know, I'm very reluctant to talk about the president. Because right. I have the highest respect for him, and I like him personally, and I know Barrow likes me too. Maybe right. he's, he'll begin to unlike me soon, but yeah. I don't care about that. So I wrote an open letter with the utmost decorum and respect. Mr. President, cut short your trip. Stop pulling the crowds together. This is going to increase our risk. He did it. I've seen that now. He came back as if that was not enough. He called people again to stay the house. You know, and then uh, just sat down, no statement from him. He's health minister is dilly-dallying up and down and then Barrow comes and gives a speech there is no coronavirus couple of minutes later the health minister comes there is coronavirus in the country and we know the level of uh, seriousness with which they are taking this is not adequate and people's lives are at risk that was a pre-recorded you know and then it doesn't matter you know, it uh, doesn't matter i was in that office i know how it works it doesn't matter they knew before the pre-recorded was aired, they knew there was a confirmed corona. Why didn't they ditch that, that particular speech? There's a politic in this. Absolutely, without a doubt. From, well, well I, I don't want to get there, actually. I don't want to get to that. What, what I want from these people, from Barrow and his government, look at what UDP is doing. Well, no, 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 I have to bring it there. It's an example. Okay. This is not political. Yes. This is His Excellency Lea Usain Dabo, former minister, 
and vice president coming up as a citizen, calling everybody who believes him and listens to him to support the government to keep the country safe. Taking out hand sanitizer, open uh, uh, hand wash basins to help. So that just shows that Baro has the moral support of all Gambians, because I think as far as he is concerned, UDP is his toughest opponent. If those people are telling, if the leader of that party is telling, let's all support the government to keep us safe, why can't Barrow reach out? Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Savali. Still with uh, Mr. Mamoudou Savali, he's here with us. Um, you did mention something about uh, this corruption happening within the government now at the minute, uh, stating uh, Mamburejai and the status quo. Mm -hmm. How can we penetrate or expose these people for them to see the light that this is not what we want as government? No, I think what's happening here, um, uh, even our press, I don't think they are measuring up to standard because some of the terrible things happening in this uh, government, they don't get to see the light of day that is deserved. Because I know Gambian peoples are so eager, especially the so-called illiterates and rural people. They're so eager for information, they want to know the facts so that they can take informed decisions. But more often than not, a lot of the clutter, especially on social media, is about personal attacks. I mean, we're not even focusing enough on... To their credit, I know some of these journalists, like Mustafa Dawa, who's not my piece of cake, did some investigative journalism, and some of them are really tough, Jahate and others. Some of them are really trying, but uh, there's still a lot to be done in terms of exposing the realities uh, of, of the negative side of, of this government. Because there is a cabal, and a lot of people know them, but they will not even mention their names. You know, so there is a cabal that's surrounding Baro, and they would do anything to make sure that Baro stays, because if Baro stays, they stay. And they will make sure that things are never ever done the right way because the moment you have proper checks and balances they are looting your stuff this is what how can we expose that bit because that's the bit we all need to know that's well, well, for, we for, for me i mean the government is uh, composed of three branches call it four if you like the executive the judiciary the legislature and uh, the famous fourth estate yeah. But are all of these institutions playing their, their role? The National Assembly, as far as I'm concerned, is performing below par. Like, I expected, for instance, the National Assembly members of Pan Europe, mm -hmm. three, to at least go to the National Assembly and initiate some form of investigation into this uh, bloated Pan Europe streets project. Because we all know that that contract is overpriced, it didn't follow due process, but they, some of these assembly members are actually clapping for power. My friend, if you give me if you take a thousand dollars from me and give me a, 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 a good or service worth one hundred dollars, have I, have, I mean, have you helped me or have you have you duped me? Well, duped and corrupt. Absolutely. So, so those are some of the things happening in this country. The procurement system is even worse now than under Jame, and we 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 all, all say in Jame is corrupt. You know, at least Jame had a big big stick. Uh, he took a lot, but most people were afraid of taking. When Baro came, they, you know what, they, literally, a conversation, they're saying, you know what, bro, let's help ourselves. Let each person help themselves. No, you do I'm telling you, literally, no exaggeration. And I've heard people saying that some of Baro's ministers are competing as to who has the tallest story building in Dakar. No jokes. I'm getting this from highly reliable sources. There's no joke about this. But then nobody's doing any serious investigative report on these things. How safe are we on the barrel? We are not at all. We are not in terms of our economy. We are not in terms of our health. We are not even in terms of our physical security because there are reports recently of Senegalese security getting into the Gambia and shooting people. And uh, there was a report of a Senegalese uh, army contingent who wanted to cross the, the bridge at Farafene and they were asked to pay their refuse. They barricaded our bridge and the bridge was closed until our IGP had to take his own money to pay for these people to cross. So we are not safe. What can we do to strengthen or lubricate this Senegal Gambia relationship? Well, it's, it's already in, in bad shape, uh, just like it was in bad shape under Jawara. Jame tried to control it, but I think Jame was unnecessarily belligerent. I give him credit. I think he did better than both Jawara and uh, Barra in terms of our relationship with Senegal, in terms of protecting. Uh, the, the sanctity of our sovereignty as a nation. Jame did better than any of these presidents, but Jame, like I said, was unnecessarily belligerent, creating unnecessary problems. His alleged involvement in the Kasamars conflict, I think that was uh, 
a, a bad move. Uh, I personally tried to reconcile him with Makisal, and to his credit, at some point, he agreed with me, said, you know what, I'll pay Maki a visit. If the devil, Jame gave me that assurance, it did not happen. Fine, but at least he did. But uh, Jame was a bit too harsh. Gambians are Sene and Senegalese. At least as individuals, we are related. We are one. And we need to distinguish that bit, uh, our relationship as individuals and families from the relationships of the two states, because that's a completely different ball game. So Baro needs to be a little bit stronger. He needs to be a little bit assertive. He needs to be a little bit serious in terms of protecting the interests so of the country. So would you say Senegal is in control of our security? We Senegal. are a, not just the security, we are a colony of Senegal right now, de facto. We have a flag, we have a president, but Mati is pulling the strings here. Anybody who is involved in business or politics in this country knows this for a fact. No yeah. exaggeration. Savali, so, um, honestly, I went around the Gambia since I came. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the tourist market and then I've been told uh, these bombs was there. They said um, even the tourists, if they come here, they don't stay that long. There's a truck that takes them down to Senegal and they, if it goes to Senegal, there's this thing happening. So when would we start uh, to, fucking, uh, to wise up? I don't, I don't, to wise up, you know? Well, I, I'm glad you mentioned the tourists, because beyond the tourists moving, uh, uh, I mean, the, the bombsters and the uh, stakeholders, because I understand, because of their, this uh, all-inclusive uh, package that the Am 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 is pushing, yeah. these young people, I, I, I want to I wanna thank you for doing this, because, you know, sometimes uh, those of us who are uh, educated, quote-unquote, I don't know how, how, how well we are educated or... We are in the mainstream, we tend to forget about uh, these people, and I, I'm very glad that Because when went, I went, I went yeah. around to the grassroots people, I went to Brickham and Monday, and I'm all, glad all this, you know, because I want to get the fact mm -hmm. and then start going up, you know, if possible, the, as many as who uh, the, the so called status quo, the elites, you know, that I can get, you know, to have a chat with them. So that's why, you know, I think you know much about these areas. That's yes, why, you know, this is important because I got wind that. Uh, in as much as tourist numbers might be big, the the benefits are not trickling down to the the poor people, yes. the, 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 the grassroots. And, and that's really bad because what you're doing, you are entrenching economic dualism and that leads to chaos in a society, without a doubt. So I'm, I'm sure uh, you've heard people complaining how much things are tough in yes. this country, how yes. people are suffering. Yeah. So if those sectors that were at least helping to get certain things trickled down to the grassroots are also uh, being twisted to favor the rich and the powerful, then the situation is going to get worse. So we might we might head for uh, a socio-economic crisis very soon, and it's obviously going to uh, reflect in the in the political sphere in a very ugly way if, if we are not careful. So the gambling is a fail at the minute. Well. Uh, like I said, um, I'm very tough on this government, but sometimes I try to tone it down. Uh, really, all is not lost. I think we can uh, retweak the dynamics, adjust the system, and get it on a proper footing. How? The only problem is, I don't see Barrow taking that route. I know. Barrow, okay, he's not a dictator who is killing people and everything. But you must live by the <laughs> and, and that makes him similar to Jame because Jame was getting things wrong and Jame had several opportunities to step back, change his ways, bring in people to, to reroute the, the ship of state. Baro is doing the same thing and he's so entrenched now, even he's getting to the level of Jame. If you criticize him, you become, you become uh, his enemy. So I, I think uh, right now, after all this uh, transitional uh, roller coaster <laughs> events, if you mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. And the three years uh, uh, melee. I think Baro is at a point where he has an opportunity to call back the stakeholders in the coalition. If he's honest enough to know that this is not his private property, he came together with people. And if not all of his mistakes, at least admit to some and ask for some level of advice. If I were Baro, and I'm not sure that this is politically very sound for me to yeah, say. Go, 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 oh, come on, that's what we are. If I were Baro. Yeah. With the UDP party leader coming up with this uh, very magnanimous gesture regarding this uh, coronavirus, yeah. I would call double to State House or even make a night surprise visit and say, you know, my father, because he said Dabo is his father. I didn't say that, so don't accuse me of that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least, I'm a baraka, saying, Lafayette, Yamar, Nanyuma, Kuibanko, Bekolearine. And I believe 
that Barrow would think about that. But this big mafia and take a command this UK Balela, Mosa Balela de Barrow, Maman Sakunda, and Sulu. And Sulu. Mm -hmm. Go Sulu, all, will live for like Kana Kata Dabo, Dabo, Dabo is your worst enemy. And if I'm not even thinking of a merger or reconciliation in terms of politics between Dabo and uh, Barrow, because I think Barrow is just like a coronavirus, which is just antivirus and letting go. But if Barrow can at least create a cordial relations between him and Dabo, where occasionally they would just consult wallah his fortunes would double in this country i can tell you that for free but is this is he's cornered in state house he doesn't even know what the price of a bag of rice is because he says it's 900 maybe in gunjuri you buy it for 900 <laughs> i bought it for a thousand seven hundred and fifty yesterday to, to store up for this corona thing so so they cornered him he doesn't know what's happening and they are feeding him with wrong and bad information and I can assure you, they dig in his political grave. He say, oh my, his political grave will bury him in 2021. Metaphorical, let me clear, clarify before they accuse me of... When it comes to the Gambia, yeah, yeah. when it comes to the Gambia, <laughs> I think the Gambia is bigger than all of us. Absolutely. I think, you know, we should look at this in a diverse way, mm -hmm. in such a way that um, we see the Gambia first. Mm -hmm. Would you say uh, Adam Abaro is seeing the Gambia force or seeing no, no, his no. political affiliation. Barrow is not interested in Gambia. Barrow is interested in his pocket, in his uh, position as president. That's it, nothing else. That's all. Adam Barrow doesn't care about this country and uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. That's catastrophic. Yeah, it is. That's why I said it's a disaster. Well, uh, Sabali, now UDP. Yes. Why UDP? Well, good question. <laughs> good question, because yeah. I mean, I know I've answered this question. Uh, I don't know why do you generally keep asking the same questions, man. No, well, uh, you've got similarities, <laughs> but we got diversion going somewhere. We'll get to the diversion. Okay, but I, I, I'm glad to. I can't answer this question before, but I'm glad to answer it again because people have been asking me this question. Just a couple of days ago, just at this table here. I met a young guy, you know I'm Badi Bunka in Sarah they are my children, they love me. He came and said, Mr. Sabali, I need to talk to you, you know, I follow you, you are my mentor, blah, blah, blah. But I have one problem with you, UD, why UDP? Same question you asked. I said, why UDP? Why UDP? So yeah. I sat him down here, luckily after an hour he decided to join the body. <laughs> because there are a thousand and one reasons yeah. for me to join the UDP. Yeah. And uh, I don't, have, no, I don't ha have a thousand minutes to talk here, yeah. because I gotta go anyway, and you also have some other things to do. But, by way of background, when the change of government happened, 2017, I said I'm not involved in any political party, including APRC. And I was the only German former minister, brave enough to say that, because they were run a lot, but nobody spoke. I am the one in that APRC, in that political party, in Telapo, because nobody can kill me. But then also there are moves to try to get me into UDP, like I've said this, my late uncle, the late Lang Marong, Alamani, you took me to Dabo and told Dabo, you know, this guy is my son, and, and I love him, and it's true. And he is giving me, showed me a lot of love and support way before the change of government. During the Jame era, he was UDP, hardcore. I was in Jame's camp, but this guy always reached out to show me love and support, and may Allah reward him for all his good deeds. Mm. So when the change of he pulled me, he said, took me to Dabo. You know what? I've worked for this party all my life. I'm old now. I don't have the energy. I want you to come and continue with the work I did. A very emotional setting, um, both Sedikan was there and Lamin mm. At that point, Lada was the most powerful human being in this country. Barrow was in Senegal in exile. You know, he said he never ran away, but he was in Senegal, you know that. Dabo was here, just free from prison. If I said yes, opportunities would open for me. But I'm not that type. I didn't say yes, but I didn't say no either, out of respect for my uncle. But he decided to keep the conversation going. So I maintained the... Uh, Relationship with Dawa, I used to visit him at home when he was foreign minister at office. Even when he was vice president, I once at least once visited him at his office. And uh, I, I thank him for always opening his doors to me, even though we were in opposite political camps. And I was one of the first most virulent critics of this government. And he was there. But as you was a lawyer, Dawa is a real leader and he's a democrat and he's, he's tolerant. I was criticizing his government and I was going to him and having tea and coffee with him. And he would, he would, he would give me fatherly advice. And he would not even mention those things. So I was observing all of these things. And like you said, I was attending different political parties' platforms yes. and they asked, accusing me of yes. flip-flopping. But I never said I was part of any open political party. You know, so after analyzing the whole situation, and I was, I enjoyed being neutral, because I could say anything. 
But once you are in a political party, at yes. least at some level, you, you have to tell the party's line. Yes. But as an independent guy, and that's why my hashtag just went viral and I lift it, can't cage me. Nobody can cage me. Nobody can tell me where to go and where not to go. Nobody can tell me what to say or what not to say. Nobody could determine who I could relate with. And I really enjoyed this. But the way the country was going, I saw that the ship was about to hit an iceberg. And if it happens, we are all going to sink. And the, 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 the ocean is not going to say, Sabali is neutral, it's not part of government, he was part of the army, he's going to eat all of us. So I said, I need to take a decision now. People, yeah. Yeah, before making that decision, mm -hmm. being neutral, yeah. you know, not affiliated to any party, mm -hmm. you could still do that, can't you? Now, what I'm saying is, if I continue that, yeah. Barrow is still strengthening himself. He's uh, sending his groups, his tentacles all over the country, self situation. Mm -hmm. And I knew, honestly, like I told you, I love Baro. Uh, good relationship with his blood family, and they're beautiful people. Really, really kind, nice people. Mm -hmm. But I made an objective analysis and reached the conclusion that Adama Baro does not have the knowledge, the ambition, the experience, and the integrity to deliver the goods for the Gambians, especially the constituency I care for most young people. So, and I know that I have a political constituency. Many people didn't know that until I joined UDP. I was not joking in this country. I, I, was, I was sowing good seeds by the grace of Allah and for the sake of Allah. And I knew that Allah would reward me for that. I don't know when or where. But I knew I have put political capital. How do I use that political capital? Do I remain neutral? And then the people who follow me and listen to me, they are in different camps? Or do I make a choice? As to who to support, either the incumbent or join an opposition and uproot this cancerous incumbent and uh, create a brighter future of this country. So it was clear I had to choose a political party if I wanted to have impact, even though some people thought I should create my own political party. And from my own analysis and knowledge and experience in this country, it was going to be disingenuous for me to set up my own political party because before I can make impact, it might be 10, 15, 20 years. And we cannot all afford to have Barrow continue here that long. So I decided of all the parties, yeah. UDP was the best. Well structured, well anchored, nationwide character. The leadership, like I said, Davo is a good listener. He's tolerant, he's a democrat. He believes in human rights. And he has created the most effective platform for youth empowerment among all the political parties. Look at Talib Ben Suda and the wonderful job he's doing. Rahim Malik Lo, uh, the chairman in Basse, Landing Sane, even the Kianka, when he joins, uh, and he came to another UDP, a Parakaka do who can do it. No, 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 UDP. I say, I was the American under a million. From under a million to come on, the Melan, 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 the Mel after analyzing the dynamics, yes. the only party I believe that can okay. take Adam Abaro to task and uproot him is yes. UDP. So, Lafa Bankole Dokole, Nibe Dokole Eka Jorama Lenyini. Right? Nata Eko Ibita Farafara Lola, Ela Ela Kumkoto. Ni Murundingo Begulu, Muruba Bige, Ebe Murundingo Tala Fu Muruba. UDP Ela Muruba, Si Atele Kumkoto, Si Atele Kumkoto Sene Yandino. So, Ni Nyamul Men Bejang Be Uwai Uwai La Jang Ebe Kler. Absolutely without a doubt. You know, I always say, you know, when it comes to this new dynamic, Gambia dynamics. Yeah, yeah, me. Doku bali amati na ngabundi jam. I doku kela. Yeah, yeah, me amati na ngabundi jam. Tajire, if I may use a sayo baro word. Lack of respect for human rights. Lack of respect for rule of law. Due process. One them. And you know, so. When it comes to that, you look at all these uh, political parties and their leadership. Who has better credentials than Goya Dabo? You're talking of Rulof, he's a lawyer. You're talking about respect of human rights, he's, he's been there. He's been fighting for that for 22 years. You're talking about equality, he's there for everybody. You're talking of the, one of the most important aspects of leadership, which I did mention before in my interaction with him, the ability to listen and to be tolerant. It's Dabo, nobody else.
Bro, some people might say he was an obstacle to this policy. Would you say yes to that? How can he be an obstacle to his, to his coalition? When, when the coalition was being formed, he was not even here. He was in jail. Right. I think it's the haters who say this. Some of and then there was this statement, uh, speculation going on that he is the cause of the, uh, all this commotion happening. Well, if that is a cause of this commotion, maybe it's Halifa Salah who came up, apparently uh, came up with the streets tactic as he himself called it and the way he was defending it I suspected Alifa is behind this review of this three years tactic because that's the that's the spanner I mean in, in the wheels of the coalition. That's where everything went south. And Daba was not there when they took this decision. So Halifa is the problem now. He's part of the problem and not the solution. Yes, I said it. And I stand right. by it. Uh, Halifa is part of the problem, not the solution, yes. uh, like Mr. Savali put it. But Mr. Dabo did say, um, uh, uh, if anybody who mentioned this fear, they will take you to court. Yes. Five years. So He's, what's your thought on that? Well, he said it, and I, I remember challenging him on that, on, on this case. Yes. Uh, that was his personal position, and he gave it a backing that uh, his whole career has been based on constitutional law, and he wanted to defend the constitution. Dabo said that, and uh, I don't think... For me, I would not say that at the time, but this is what he said, and he gave reason for, for, for saying it. I, I, I will help you fast forward to the flip-flop. I know that's where you were heading for alleged flip-flop. Now, Dabo was challenged by his party, according to what we heard, that you spoke for yourself as a lawyer, and we respect you, and we know you love your career, but we are a party and a democratic party, so we are going to discuss this at the level of the party structures and came up with a final decision. And they discussed, unfortunately, my uncle lost and the party, the majority of the party won. So Dabo, and I think that's actually, you might, you might see, yeah, you might see it as negative. For me, it's a good sign that UDP is well entrenched in the principles of democracy. So, so that's what happened. So the party prevailed. Adam Obaro is a, is an offspring of UDP. <laughs> so if you stop <laughs> criticizing him in all angles, left, right, and center, I don't get it. <laughs> it looks like you are really ready for it. You know, Barrow, you, you keep pushing me to Barrow. I don't want to be too hard well, on he's the, the president. No, he's I, the president in charge. I know, we but, so, but sometimes he's thin skin. I don't want him to come back and tell me also where were you, like he told Dr. Cisse, you know. But here yeah, it is. Huh? Yeah. Look, even those people who were not members of UDP, Nico UDP at the time, Mustafa Ika Juma Letomoy, Loya Dabo, Ahmadou Sane, uh, Modlamin Sane, Singul Nyasi, Lang Marong, Solo Sandek, where was Adam Abaro at the time? I would call him a fringe member of the party because he was deputy treasurer and even uh, any foolish Kiyanka can do that. He was not even an accountant okay. and he was deputy. So Baro, and if you look at Baro and his record and his talk and with all the chest thumping, You'll never hear Barrow mention which rally he attended for UDP, what he did in terms of mobilizing people. You will not say that. He just say, Ntele Motoljo, Ferriol de Cross can tell you, yeah, treasurer. So as far as I'm concerned, he was a fringe member. And maybe because of that, he didn't actually get to imbibe the qualities and, uh, and principles of the party. And that's why we have uh, this uh, Kulun, Kulun Gibantama. <laughs> <laughs> you think uh, coming to uh, before we go, Mr. Savali, it's been interesting. Um, uh, you think Mr. Dabo can rule this community? Absolutely, without a doubt. I think he's our best bet right now. In fact, yesterday I had a conversation with. Uh, Lanet Senior, somebody really experienced, exposed beyond the borders of this country, and uh, we are all discussing about UDP and leadership issues. And we all concluded that Roya Daba is the best bet, not only for UDP, but also the country. Because one, he has the leadership qualities, he has the knowledge and experience, he has the, 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 the integrity. And whether you love or hate this man, you have to agree he has the love and respect for the majority of the Gambians, including Adam Abaro. So if you have somebody like that as a leader in your country, because Gambia, we messed up this initial transition, we're going to start another transition. And it's very difficult to run even a normal country, talk less of a country in transition. So that's why I agreed with that guy that we should all push to make sure Roya Adawa becomes the flag bearer for UDP and becomes president. Because you have to be sensitive to the cultural realities of our uh, social political dynamics. 
kebala kumo damale kalo na adoto mulka kebala koroma ya bunya modo mamadun teni teni ya yala ni wo he loya dabo ya hana ta be kamfari na bala kamfa kumo na lai sabai and we still got a reconciliation and reunification process to go through I think we need somebody of the caliber and stature of lawyer yeah, that, that, to, to lead please. us through from this wilderness. Is it yeah. tough enough, you think? Because this must yeah, have this yeah, yeah, must have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to decision making, yes. Zambia is a very, it's a, it's a yes. very critical state at the yes. moment. Yes. Yes. We need somebody who can make drastic or, you know, measures when it comes to the nation decision making. I agree thing. with you. Is it tough enough to handle that situation, you think? You know, um, I'm still studying that one. I'm studying this guy. Uh, if you're far from Roya Dabo, you may make uh, judgments about him, but you get close to this man, <laughs> you'll know he's a man of metal and courage. And I know Roya Dabo is tough, has been tough, but I think with his recent experiences, that has even toughened him more. I don't see him being cruel like Jamie or not, not that kind of toughness but the decisiveness and courageousness to be able to take decisions, including unpalatable decisions for the common good in the East interest of the country. I have seen all of that in Lohan Deviation and UDP. All right. Sorry? Division in UDP. Division in what? In UDP. I don't see any division. This party is more united than any well, party right now. That's the speculation. Well, it's the haters. They try to do this propaganda to change the image of the party. They, they are afraid of our size and our growth, our explosion like... Uh, like a meteor. <laughs> 2021, who is going to lead? His Who's Excellency the Lawyer Honorable Hussein Udawa. Nobody else. Without a doubt, inshallah. Yes. Well, what position are you looking for? Nothing, absolutely. I just want uh, a UDP government. If they give me any assignment that I believe I can perform effectively, I will. I don't need a job in any government to survive. It's been almost four years. Then not work it on work. The government like it. Alhamdulillah, Allah to live on. But really, I just want a UDP government. Whatever assignment I'm given, if I feel that I can do this, I will do it. You know, Halifa Sala. Yes. Do you think he's man enough to rule this country? <laughs> um, Your thoughts? I, <laughs> I don't know whether you are trying to reignite. A fight between me and uh, no, Ser not, not really. Serin, Serin Digal, as I call him, and his Talubes. Oh, but um, Serin yeah, Serin Digal, yeah, because the way his his followers hero worship him is is is, is flabbergasting for me. Mm. Halifa, I have the highest respect for, admiration and honor, and I always say this, and I still stand by this. But I think he's overrated in terms of leadership qualities. What has he demonstrated in terms of leadership here? Fantastic civic education guy. He knows a lot of Pan-Africanism history, you know, and uh, he's a great orator, one of the finest in the whole world. But even if you look at the people who've worked for Foraya as a newspaper and they talk to you about Khalifa's leadership style, you will not even give Khalifa your nursery school to run or talk less of a country. Why? He just can't do it. The guy is good in theory and philosophizing, which is important. I'm not damn playing that. Every huge civilization was based on sound intellectual philosophical foundations. <laughs> But when it comes to implementation, Halifa is not good at it. And I suspect that maybe that's why he declined executive position, because it might expose him. That's what I think. But again, my respect for him. Remains. People might see it through him then. Yeah. And that's dodgy. Well, it is. It is. But Halifa, no. I, I don't think he can, he can, he can uh, run an executive uh, position effectively. That's my like opinion. Presidential position. No, he can't. He will yeah. feel dismally. I believe that strongly. Before we go, Mr. Sabali. Uh, who do you think can rule and run this country, honestly? I suspect you belong to another opposition party. Maybe you are BYM. <laughs> As if I answered this question as clearly. As allegation. You know? Well, yeah. I, I, being suspicious, because I answered this question. Maybe you didn't like my answer. No, no, no. There is only to... one viable option that can be effective and deliver the goods for Gambians, and this is Excellency, the Honorable Lawyer Isenu Dabo. Secretary General of the of the UDP. Before we go, your final thoughts. Well, um, <laughs> your final thoughts. To thank you uh, yeah, and your team for, yeah. for this. I know it's been difficult setting this up. Yeah. And just to advise uh, the listeners, all Gambians, to let's be tolerant of each other, man. Uh, let's do politics on a decent platform. Uh, let's uh, let everybody do something for the good of the country. Our leadership is not effective, it's not going to deliver, but it's not an excuse for us to our hands uh, each one help one man it's difficult times here and let's keep the peace 
and let's let's respect the principles of democracy. Let's not use force to try to change the government. Let's keep the peace. Let's be respectful and tolerant of each other. Let's support each other. It's a very difficult situation. And I mean, I support. I care less about uh, political party when it comes to my social responsibilities. Let's help each other regardless of political affiliation. I think that's very important. We are all Gambians at the end of the day. I did say final thoughts, but uh, if I may add this to it, uh, in the Gambia, there's one case. What's the uh, risk behind this? Our health else. Well, our health sector is definitely not prepared to handle this, so um, we all need to give extra support to the system. Uh, I know we are criticizing the government, and I want to encourage people to do that actually. Yeah. But some people are saying, let's stop the finger pointing. We have to hold these people to account. They are receiving our salaries. But besides that, uh, social distancing, which is known to be effective, let's practice it, stop all these gatherings and wash our hands. Uh, hand sanitizers, uh, which our first lady happened to be calling hand saliza. And people are saying we should not criticize. I will criticize her. If you want to go to our schools to speak English, you better speak correct English. We're not going to excuse you for that. Our educational system is bad enough. But beyond all of that, I want to end on a positive note. Coronavirus is a disease. There is a God, and one of his names are the, is the cure. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think God will see us through this, even though we cannot renege on our responsibilities and obligations and be careless and say, Na ado lem pino lem dino. Like, come on, stop it. I, I saw a hand sanitizer at the mosque opposite King Cell around Latikun and I was really impressed because this is our team, we are reasonable people. We cannot uh, afford to take unnecessary risks, you know. So we need to take precaution, uh, support the government, you know, support the government, criticize us, but do something also to support to, to at least minimize the impact of this uh, disease. And uh, I want to conclude again. Yes, go on. We always remember that at the end of the day, despite all the politics and everything, we are all Gambians. Mm -hmm one family, one nation, let's be tolerant to each other, let's respect each other, let's support each other, beyond politics. It's, it's a difficult world under Adam Abaru. Mr. Savali, thank you so much for your time, thank energy you. and effort uh, for coming on board here to talk to us about something regarding our own born, uh, country, the Gambia. Uh, so long it has been Mustafa Jame and Mr. Mamadou Savali, yeah, I saw behind the scene here. Uh, thanks until you come your way, same place, same time. Thank you so much and have a pleasant day or night wherever you are on this planet. Peace. Peace, love, unity. Banco Irwandi, Gambia. Banco Irwandi.
Kabango Yiruandi. Gambia, Jamana B. 